Hey folks, let's face it, there's a lot of dark times out there, a lot of difficult situations, a lot of obstacles to overcome. That's what this show is all about. Even when darkness surrounds, we'll find that there can always be a hope revealed. I'm Sieg. I'm the founder of the e-commerce business school. And this is where we teach people how to have an automated e-commerce business in a 90 day sprint. Um, we shift in the e-commerce space, uh, fall of 2013. So it's been seven years now. We have serviced 8,000 students and our current stats are that we have an 80% graduation success rate. And you can find me at joinebs.com, which will take you to my homepage of the e-commerce business school.com. Again, that's join ebs.com. Hey, this is Matt, and welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. I'm so excited to have Anne with us today. What an amazing story and journey she's had in her life. Very inspirational, especially during the times we're facing right now with COVID and uncertainty, and when people think there may not be options. Um, I believe that Anne, her story, and her husband's story uh, can definitely say, Nah, there's a chance to do something better. And, uh, and that's going to be something you're going to talk about today. And I appreciate you being here with us today on Hope Revealed. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. And indeed, we want to give hope to people because hope is there. And I'm happy to share that. Awesome. And you surely have a great story to tell us about that today. So uh, before we do that, you've been through a lot of things in your life and you're working in the e-commerce field right now, which is amazing. And there's a great, lot of great opportunities out there with e-commerce and, of course, affiliate sales, things of that nature, which is probably all in combo with what you're doing. Uh, and it's grown tremendously in the past few years, for sure. Um, and it's really a matter of, of tapping into the right tools, tips, and tricks to be able to make that thing work, because it doesn't just turn on. Like, I've seen all these JV Zoo commercials and the Warrior Plus stuff. is like, hey, buy this thing for, for 10 bucks, and you can be making this much money. And it's no, no work, no nothing. Just do it all. Press here. Lie. <laughs> nothing like that <laughs> works like that. But... There are opportunities to, to make things easier and better for you once you understand certain things. And that's some of the stuff you're able to share with people how to do, which is fantastic. But that's where you're at now. Let's back up a little bit. Sure. Uh, because I know that it wasn't always that way. And I know that probably, probably back in the, uh, in the early to mid-2000s, um, you weren't doing that kind of stuff. And there were some other things you were trying to do in your life. What would that look like back, back in the 2000s when you first started thinking about all this kind of work? Yeah, um, Basically, my husband and I have been very entrepreneurial, and um, we did a couple of businesses before we found one that really helped service our family for a good 12 years, and that was the automotive windshield business, specifically windshield replacement and rock chip repairs, and he kind of fell into that, how life happens that way, so he fell into that, and working for someone else, and branched off on his own, and this was in the state of Minnesota, so um, it was really a fantastic business for him. He's a really hands-on guy. He loves working with his hands. He likes being out in the field. He loves servicing customers. So he built this really large network. He was servicing several dealerships within the Twin City metro area, which is you know it's about 3.2 million people up in just Chicago. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. And then we were also advertising in a paper. There were like six different editions all around the, the different suburbs around and in that whole Twin City Metro. So um, I purposely, by design, wanted to keep it smaller because I was homeschooling at that time. Whereas, oh, but look at that couple. They're doing it together. And I said, yeah, well, I'm homeschooling. That's my top priority. So it was more of a one or two man operation. So you weren't really going out there and like grab somebody's windshield and yank that thing out and put it on? Come on, Ann, really? Definitely not me. Um, <laughs> I, did the, I did the book work. I, I called the insurance companies and did all that while doing the homeschooling. Then I was able to get someone else to take my place for that part um, because subsequent to that, while we were doing that, I started to develop what Robert Kiyosaki calls a kitchen table you know, business, meaning kind of on the side, a side hustle, um, because I thought, well, no, we better have a safety net here, you know, yeah. that, um, you know, if we don't have some big bailout plan for us, it's going to be dependent on us. So I started uh, doing, as it was, I'd been doing many different direct sales opportunities, but that was always very part-time. So I got more serious about it, and that was running about two weeks prior 
pardon me, two years prior to then what happened is a new law came out in the state of Minnesota. And anytime you see a new law come out about a business, like there was one of the tanning salons that wiped out all those people. Well, that's what happened in our industry. So a law came out that was very prohibitive about the advertising practices. And it was a slow two and a half year death spiral. And it was very, very painful because he truly did love it. He loved that job. Um, but I had been building something in the background. So for him, it was, it was, it was depressed. I won't yeah, no it. doubt. I mean, he was probably had his heart and soul. And plus it's, if he's a people person, then I assume he was probably enjoying spending time with people and having an opportunity to fix something for them. And then there's great reward when you feel like somebody comes out and goes, Oh man, thank you so much. You fixed it. And I mean, I, I, I have been in the rock chip windshield repair business myself in the past. So I have an affinity for that. And I know how long it took me to fix even rock chips in a window. Yeah. And when they just pay and leave, you're like, I mean, I was sweating bullets over this thing for an hour and a half. <laughs> Things have changed now. You can fix a windshield much faster. But back in the day, it wasn't yeah. so fast. But anyway, it, you, you develop relationships with people for sure. And, and uh, it's a great opportunity. But to see something like, um, like this outward um, attack come at you, I guess, in a sense, from, from this advertising perspective, um, well, like, I guess social media was pretty, pretty strong back then. Not as strong as it is no, today. It didn't exist at all. The um, internet was very, this was back in 2002. So you're so doing more newspaper no, print to, and were you yes. doing any like radio advertising and no. things that just it was print strictly newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. So and they didn't and then, want anybody to advertise about windshield repairs and insurance repairs. huh? Well, what it was is, Someone got creative in the Twin City Metro and actually went nationwide. And that was where they would give, um, well, in the service industry, you call it a bird dog, but to customer B2C, it's called a kickback. So they got a rebate. Okay. I and see where we're going with this that's now. That's right. And then what happened? I love it. Since you were in the industry, you can relate. Oh, he's giving 100. Oh, well, I'll give 150. Oh, and, and, you know, and then before you know it, the insurance company are up at the legislature going, hey, wait a minute here. And so it's basically a war between insurance companies, which is much, much, much bigger than right. over Just here. a little guy fixing the windshield. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even though well, that's they a, that's created a bummer. A, it was a bummer. So we kind of just saw everybody's businesses wipe out. And then really the nail in the coffin was the day, well, that he sold his van. And then when he sold his equipment, like a cold knife is about uh. 800 bucks. So, you know, when he sold those last few pieces, the, the articles of your trade that you loved, you know, yeah, it was over. It, it was just like, yeah, it's uh, it's a done. death process. It feels like like you've had a death in the family. You've lost a child. You lost a, a really important part of your life. I can understand that. I've been, I've been in that position as well. Not a fun place. And um, it's not necessary. It's not necessarily something that good English. It's not necessarily. I think it is not necessarily something that you can get over easily it doesn't no. happen fast it's like um, a baby you're losing it a is baby. it's you a put grieving your heart and your soul and there's a grieving process plus it put the um roof over our heads from when i was homeschooling and so it was able to free me up to 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 do that pursuit because of this business so it had done i was just grateful that we had as long as we did during yeah. that whole upbringing era so you had this two and a half years of of kind of seeing things going down a bit by bit and thinking, man, maybe next week is going to get better. Maybe next week. And finally, the next week was not coming and you had to make some decisions. So he, he, he had to pull the plug. You guys made the decision, um, which is a difficult time. It's a dark place, like I said, and this, that's what this show is all about, about helping to identify some dark places in our lives where we thought there was no way out. Um, but there was, uh, there was light at the end of the tunnel. There was a hope. And in the meantime, when you had whoever else was doing the books, uh, you had some opportunity to hit the kitchen table a little harder. Mm -hmm. And you started digging in more into some more stuff online. Yes. And it was, uh, from what I'm aware, it was getting a little more successful right at that point. Yes. Um, the timing. I was so glad that I started it while I had, you know, there was good money coming in from his business at that time. That doesn't always happen for people, you know, but I. I guess I had the, you know, it was fortuitous that I did decide to do it when I did. 
um, so that it wasn't like, oh, it's ending, I better quick scramble. So it wasn't a right, quick right. scramble. I had started it. And actually what was going on at that time as well is I was reading the Robert Kiyosaki books that I got exposed to, which I shared with my eldest son. So he starts doing businesses on his parallel journey. I'm testing different things. Then he sponsors me into a direct sales company when he was 18. And so then became this journey. And so we're trying to do that in the offline world. There was no social media. There wasn't lead gen or it was very, very new. Uh, it was, actually, it was around, but not very well known. And um, he was struggling. I was becoming a top seller, but not a top recruiter. So he says, well, you should go online. And that was what turned everything, was going online. I had the good fortune to have a great mentor right from the get-go, which mm. isn't, that's atypical. Most people have a pretty bad sour taste in their mouth from when they come online and they buy a course, like you said, and oh, for 10 bucks, you're going to uh, lay in your hammock and the money will just come in and, you know, yeah, yeah. those lies, exactly like you said. Um, but they become very disillusioned as well when, in fact, it doesn't need to be that way. So for me, I didn't have one of those awful stories. I had a great mentor and he still works with me. He's my Well, let's pause there for a second because that's, that says a lot. Uh, and not being selfish since I do a bit of mentoring, coaching, consulting, but some folks may think, you know, if somebody charges X amount of dollars for coaching, consulting, man, that's a lot of money. But I mean, at the grand scheme of things, if you have the right person instructing you the right stuff to help change your, your, do a complete turn in your life to go in a different direction, uh, it's worth everything. I mean, if you spent 10,000 bucks on one person, that's a lot. Let's say 10, let's say 5,000 bucks. That's probably about average. Mm-hmm. It's been about 5,000 bucks on somebody to have a shift in your whole life. And then you start making a million dollars a year. <laughs> that was nothing. Right. But it was everything at the same time. Right. Yes. And you got an opportunity to do something like that when the playing field was way smaller than it, than it is now. It's a, mm-hmm. a massive field of people saying, I'm your guy. Come over here. I've got this thing. I can do that thing. And not everybody's that person, but um, so you were really blessed to have somebody yes. in your life that really helped you. And um, the I, I know ahead of time, because we already talked, but I know that back in that time around 2005, your uh, income was around like $2,000 a month or so. Tell us what happened from there. Yeah. So we put up a website in November of 2005, started generating leads. Uh, that was 2005. And then heading into 2006, we just exploded. And this was um, when, okay, so when my husband's business was filtering out, he was washing windows. He was fueling jets at the local Minneapolis airport, international airport. So he was hodgepodge. Oh, he worked at a home for disabled men. And I was very proud for him for the fact that he wasn't too proud to go into really menial, low paying job. Those fueling at that time was nine bucks an hour. And then you got demerits. If you had three demerits, you were out. That means if wow. you showed up, you showed up 30 seconds late, boom, demerit. I mean, it was the most awful wow. situation of doing that. And you would do that in the winter. And it's like a hundred pound coupling that you've done when you're doing the fueling of the jets. Just a and miserable to, job. Oh, miserable. And then here was the real clincher in terms of this whole part and theme is uh, then my eldest son was doing the washing windows. It was a business that my husband's a friend owned. So he was doing anything, right? Just to pick up odd jobs. They were doing that together. And he said, yeah, I'm not going to let her. Isaiah, our eldest son, be on the top ring, the rung. My husband was on the top rung, three stories up. I'm like, oh. No, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. So that made me really, really motivated. And the other part was, so he shifted out of that window business. And then it was the airport and the working at a home for disabled men. He would put in 30 hours between Friday and Sunday night. And so he would get home. He'd reek of jet fuel, go downstairs, quick shower. I'm making him food. And I looked at him one day and I'll get choked up with life. I've repeated this story so many times. He's heading out the door to do the night shift. So this guy would pump out 30 hours in three days with very little sleep. So I was afraid he was going to get in an accident. But I said, I pointed my finger, I said, mm-hmm. I said I'm going to get you home. I'm mm-hmm. going to get you home. And because when I saw the risks he was taking, 
being at the top rung of the ladder, he said, no, I'm not going to let her I'm going to, I'm going to be at the top rung. And then when he was these crazy chefs, it was crazy. And I have to say that did not make ends meet. It helped pay the bills, but it didn't get us out of it's just they right, were all mean, low pain. They were all yeah. low pain. And so it was awful. So I was very, very, very motivated because I was actually afraid for his life. His dad died by falling off our steps, hitting his head. Mm. So like, you know, all these things that just kind of put this huge emotional driver. Yeah. Uh, and I you guys were willing to do this. anything as a family, whatever it took. It wasn't that you guys had pie in the sky, had everything was perfect. It was it was day to day, do whatever you could to pay the bills, to keep the kids going, to keep the food in the house, all that kind of stuff. It was very uh, tough. It was tough. It's not like you just were, of, you've been a successful gal your whole life and this has been perfect, Rosie, but you know what it's like to have to struggle and to what it takes to go through things and figure out, okay, let's see, this time we can fix this for dinner instead of that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, but, but then, and there, there definitely was that hope reveal for you guys. I mean, the effort that you had put in uh, it, it made a yeah, turn. It did. And you know, the turn came because of the energy that I had put into my own family that my son had gone off to study internet marketing and I was learning it through a different program. So when we came together, it was like two matches exploding. So it was yeah. actually this joint effort that because I had exposed him to business and books that led to entrepreneurialism, and we had also done real estate investments. So they grew up seeing us doing a lot of things. So it was, real, it was just natural, it was like breathing. So then we became partners in 2005. And together, because actually he went through a very, very bad motorcycle accident, which is what then brought him home into our house for me to bandage his wounds every day, living in the living room, while wow. my husband had this crazy job at the airport. And... Um, I said, you know, I've got a good thing going and I think, I think we should partner up. You got a good thing. Yeah, I got a good thing. Let's see what we can do together. <laughs> that was really the turning point. And so you had gone from doing the washing the windows, residential and commercial with my husband to learning internet marketing. And then it was the two of us coming together. So then it was when we exploded going from 2000 to 90,000 in three months in 2006, it was August. I remember Perfectly. Perfectly. Okay, let's stop there for a second. You said you went from two thousand dollars a month in ninety days, from two thousand dollars a month to ninety thousand dollars. Not ninety thousand dollars in in ninety days, but ninety thousand dollars a month. Actually, it was um, yeah, two ninety thousand dollars a month. We did that in a three month period. Amazing. Days. Yeah, that was all scaled due to our advertising. So we just watched our metrics through our advertising and any profit we had. We drove in, and this was building someone else's company, and we were selling their information product. So we got, you know, we got the payments by selling their product plus growing this organization. Yeah. So, so the income stream was actually better selling the product than this whole building an organization, but we had both streams of income, kind of that. So the ninety thousand was just from selling the product. Then there was which is amazing to me because. I'll tell you what, girl, 90K commission means that you were killing it because that's a lot of work to do on commission from somebody else's stuff at about a 30 point margin or less. Yeah, it, it was primarily due to just really watching their numbers and driving the profits back in. And rather than keeping it was drive it in, drive it in, drive it in. So that, you know, so what happened then? I'm like, told my husband, okay, really come home because you're going to help us make more money working from home because the whole shipping was becoming, we we're doing it out of our basement. So the middle son, we set up the whole shipping center down there, but we would watch Star Wars while doing shipping. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Does that sound any bit familiar? Raising kids, just saying. And it was like, no, no, no. I, I said, Brian, I want you to do the shipping. So you created your own Amazon you had yeah, yeah. Amazon downstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a very big operation. And then they'd haul up all the boxes of stuff to ship out. And it was, it became quite the operation. And then we shifted into making our own product. And then it really skyrocketed. 
Wow, that's amazing. And and that was 2005, 2006. So you lose the business. He's washing windows. He's fueling jets. He's helping old guys and disabled guys and doing whatever he can, knocking stuff out, who, by the way, is an amazing man. Uh, there's no doubt he's an Thank amazing you. man. Yeah, yes. so uh, so much. And then, mm-hmm. of course, he has an amazing wife who um, who loves her husband enough to say, it, come home. You know, gets me choked up thinking about it, too, oh, yeah. that um, you are willing to say, look, I, I love you and I want you to come home. And, um, yeah. you know, you took that motivation and you turned it into something else. And, you know, here's the news now. Tell me tell me where you're at with now from from those two thousand to ninety thousand dollar days. Yeah, well, I won't say that it was okay. So basically, things took off like a rocket. But then, here's the irony: that same thing about the advertising law that happened in the offline brick and mortar world. The same thing happened in the online world in mm. 2009 with something called the Google Slap. So it's not as though it's been without challenge since I came online. However, the really big takeaway is. You find out who you are when things get tough. Oh, yes. You know, that's like great. they say, your character is forged in the tough times, not in the good times. Like you're, not, you're not being tested with your fortitude. But so we were tested fiercely coming out of that business and then shifting online. So then we're trucking along. And I mean, the leads and sales are just pouring in. We did 4.2 million with our first ebook and about four point two million dollars with the, with an ebook and we didn't really have much of a back end then because we we're so new to online marketing that we didn't we hadn't quite solved that piece you know like if i would have known then what i know now that would have been 20 million oh I didn't my know gosh. that yet i didn't know that it would have been at least that but anyway so but the good thing is we built a subscriber list an email list and it was almost half a million and we basically lived on that subscriber list for about eight years with a 10-person team. That speaks to how important a subscriber list is. And I really learned the art of email marketing <laughs> a lot. So referring to other people's stuff, we built our own training program, just a lot of offers, and we had an Ascension funnel. So, you know, what I've learned is that with every hardship, you you go up another level if you allow it to push you to do that and i've had plenty of people along the way say it's time to give up and yeah and so so basically we shifted in the e-commerce the first business was teaching people how to generate leads and convert them into customers so online sales funnels and it's it's pretty amazing i'm I look back and I'm so, so grateful I learned that skill set. But we found a way easier business model when I was in, introduced back into e commerce. My sons had done an eBay business in a, a junior high and high school. So, like, we had a lot of experience to draw on because we tried a lot of things and been comfortable with trying a lot of things. And so, it gives you a, ba- a, a broader scope of yeah. things to pull on and draw on because of so many different varied experiences that were out of the realm of a normal job. You know, it was a lot of entrepreneurialism. So anyways, when this um, e-commerce opportunity came along, I was like, oh yeah, sure. We, you know, we do. The boys did that when they were, when they were little, you know. So anyways, um, we shifted into that to fall of 2013. And by contrast, what we were teaching them about sales funnels this was a cakewalk. Like they were making money literally immediately. And so I'm like, okay. The so boys you're talking about. Your boys. No, I'm no, actually I'm talking about when we as a business then in oh, gotcha. 2013. My sons were probably, it must have been 19, oh man, alive. Uh the late 19, like 97 or so. They were junior high. They're now ages, I'll say. Um, 30, 32, and 36. So this is a long time ago, <laughs> junior high and high school. Um, so anyway, so yeah, no, I'm talking about from when I came online and my son was still my partner at that time as we shifted into e-commerce. So my saying is to deep blue oceans and beyond when it comes to e-commerce. It's just so huge. Yeah. And then along comes COVID. 
the heavens open up. Yeah, so for a lot of people, COVID was disastrous, but for a lot of people in certain industries, it's quite the opposite. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, for example, Zoom. I mean, yeah. I wish I had <laughs> bought stock in Zoom in January. Um, didn't know this was coming, but neither did Zoom. Right. And they, I could imagine their staff oh. meetings when Corona hit. They're like, um, Bob, <sighs> how are we going to? I don't know. Do we have enough? No. Well, oh. we've got to make it happen because everybody in the world is going to start using the thing. Servers and, galore. Right? Oh, my goodness. So I, I have some grace. Them. I've had a lot of hiccups with Zoom here in the past few months. But, you know, there's a lot of grace there because they, they never, I mean, they were probably planning on getting that big down the road, but not like this. And um, they've had to make a lot of changes. And I surely hope it's been beneficial for them because a lot of people use their service and they should be uh, rewarded for that, obviously, financially. Yes. There's a lot of free things out there people use. Uh, I'm one of them. I use free stuff. And I also have my own platform that I use, but sometimes I use Zoom. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing to think about that. But you've had a great opportunity during COVID, even in your business. Um, not that you were like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Um, you're your stuff just kept on trucking along, right? Well, it wasn't even just like for me, who's promoting it and selling it, but our members, they're like, it's Q4, which Q4, all Amazon sellers know, and we online retailers and even offline, Q4 blows up because of the holidays, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's and that's when you just really bag it down and it catapults you into the next year. So they're just rejoicing, you know? And so for me, like going to bed at night, knowing my people are doing well, my people, my babies, yeah. they're, they're not peeps. babies, they're adults, but they're my peeps, you know? And yeah. it's like, I mean, it brings tears to my eyes for the to have a network That's a network of people that are doing well in a time where people are facing adversity. Oh, and I have to say, I mean, every time I saw, it wasn't even COVID, then the riots came and that's my hometown. I was born in Minneapolis and I'm like, oh, these poor owners. And my, my heart would just ache because I know what it's like to lose a business. And so it was over 700 businesses burnt to the ground. And even aside from that, that was subsequent to COVID, but you know, those deemed essential and those non-essential what a horrible thing. You know, yeah. yours is not essential. My business is not essential. It's and essential started, to me. <laughs> exactly. And to the staff and everything. And I just felt so much pain for these business owners. I, I felt kind of kind of mm, guilty, you know, and I honestly, I wasn't quite sure how, oh, here comes COVID because my son is in China. He went through it first. I didn't think it was going to, wasn't going to wash it on our shores. That's for China. No, it landed here. But anyways, I'll just say that um, I didn't really know quite how it was going to go, but it went fast. I mean, it just exploded. And so for my members, they're just, they're posting their numbers and it's, it's insane. And then I, I knew, I thought, okay, well, this isn't just a temporary flare up. People are getting habituated into the spoilmy, rotten model of Amazon, especially of Prime. And Prime exploded. And it's like, oh, wow. Here's the secondary part of it. So that was for my sellers. An ER physician. She's in our program. She just posted 90 grand. And she worked during COVID. Her mother got COVID. She took care of her in her home and her mother died. She went right back to ER. But she kept her Amazon business going. Now she's doing it with five family members. Just that's Mm -hmm. an amazing interwoven story there. But for me, then, it's like this board game that we've been playing on the life before COVID got flipped right over. And now millions of people are in shift mode. And then, you know, I'm here. Well, Uh, one thing I think about, Ann, is like, well, here I am on LinkedIn and and, um, I get, I get, please like not please help me well i guess please help me but please for help from so many people mm-hmm. and um many from other countries specifically um places like india and africa oh. um a lot from india now there's a lot of highly educated people both in india and africa some amazing people that have no jobs no food no shelter things of those natures mm-hmm. um yet 
you know, the one thing about the internet is it's, it's everywhere. Now there are limitations in certain right. countries on the internet. I'll right. say that's a caveat for sure. Um, but even with some of those caveats, um, even in some communist countries, there are people that are making money individually, um, maybe not as much as they would make if they were in another country, but way more than they would make on their regular economy. Uh, and it's, it's open to anybody and everybody anywhere if they have time to invest in themselves and maybe a few bucks uh, mm -hmm. to learn some things. So um, besides just having e-commerce and doing Amazon sales and whatnot, don't, uh, if I understood correctly, you have some type of training for that, right? For Amazon, yes. Yeah, so you do training. Oh, yeah. We have trained on any, and we've actually trained in China too. So, and the Chinese government asked us to train over there and it's just, wasn't the right timing and it's complicated because it's the Mandarin and English. But so we've um, trained all over the country in terms of our face-to-face -face events, which now we do virtual, you know, yeah. because of COVID. Um, but we've trained on every range of e-commerce going from arbitrage, which is the easiest and fastest, all the way through private label print on demand and sourcing from China, the whole gamut. Last fall, we sat down in the boardroom, like you were mentioning about Zoom sitting down in the boardroom when they had their growth and we're like, you know, we just evaluated our whole model and what we have, we re-platformed ourselves, if you will, restructured. And we developed, we upped our mentorship program into 90 day peak performance, mentoring is what it's called. And we start with arbitrage, which is a sourcing method. And I can explain those details. But more importantly is we stepped back and looked at where are points of failure for members? What, 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 where is this? So we really studied deeply. And one is if people jump in unsuspectingly into the deep end of e-commerce with let's say Shopify, that's a much harder boat to row than if they started with Amazon arbitrage, but they wouldn't know. They read a sales letter somewhere, they get persuaded, I'm gonna make millions through Shopify. Yeah, really easy to be swayed by the marketing out there today, for sure. Exactly, and so you're led to believe this is where I should start. That's the most advanced. The easiest is arbitrage. So there's that distinction, but there's also the distinction of another point of failure was this, when we watched our members, is they would have these lapses in their business. And we understood it then from a behavioral stance, life would happen. Grandma got sick with COVID, um, son broke his leg, this, that, this, that. And so now we structured our platform that from day one, they are setting it up with systems and a team in place to run it for them. And we do that in a 90 day sprint that they will be profitable and they will. That's amazing. And to think that you can actually do something like that in 90 days. Um, so I think my question would be, I mean, the name of the show obviously is Hope Revealed. We've gone through a moment in time where you had a dark moment in your family in time. Um, definitely experience hardships as a family and struggles of, of family and middle-class families that, that we face. Now there's families up there that are, that are low class and lower than middle class that have it even worse. Um, but struggles are struggles and pain is pain and trying to make pay the bills is all the same. It's all equal at that point. Um, and now, you know, you're, you're way, way different than you were at $2,000 a month times you know, 10,000 times more. But so now you've got this opportunity. So I'm thinking about the people that reach out to me all the time, uh, specifically on LinkedIn, where I spend most of my time uh, reaching out to people. Um, and they, they don't have anything. But are you telling me that you think that if somebody can get into this school, and learn these these tips, tools, and tricks of the trade that they'll actually be earning an income within 90 days. And not yeah, just an I, income, but a good income. I don't think it's what I know. Um, now, just to speak you know, candidly about what are the variables and what people bring to the table, one is their cognitive capabilities. You are going to have to be able to tap in. And we basically, literally, we had a software engineer. He said, and I've never been an entrepreneur, but you made it so easy. If I just do these tasks, I become an entrepreneur. Yeah. And he's a linear thinker because he's a software engineer. Sure. Um, if they follow the steps and they do it. So what I'm saying is they have to show up. They have to do the work. We're mentoring all along the way. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching. We have group coaching. I have 
many, many, many case studies. I, one gal, she's an insurance adjuster. She did it in 30 days and just for added measure, she also built a Shopify store because we had it available and she wanted to have that. And I'm talking profitable and automated. She had two VAs by the end of that month. Wow. So it's really the pace that that person wants to run at. And the other variables, so I'm talking cognitive, is they're going to have to you know, fire up the neurons and go through the work, like watch the training videos and then do the actions. And then it's always the inputting of coaches and mentors to make sure you're doing it correctly. Yeah. But it's, it's, so it's not a think it's, I know, cause we just work. Well, what I'm hearing is that if you're unemployed, um, chances are you're not working anywhere. So that means you've got time. Uh, COVID still affecting everybody in the world, which means you've got time. Um, if you have a cell phone or an internet connection, uh, you've got the ability. So then it sounds to me as if there's, there's opportunity for yeah. anybody willing to take the steps to make this happen, to make it happen. Without That's great news, man. That's fantastic news. So <laughs> let me ask you this question. How can, how can somebody reach you? How can they find, you know, what's the website? How can they get plugged into something like this and, and, and get going with what you're talking about. Cause it's just amazing, amazing news. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, it's e-commerce business school and you can go to join ebs.com. That'll take you to our homepage, the e-commerce business school. You'll see that there's a free training up at the top, right? You click that link. You can go through that free training. There's also many case studies. We also talk about our three pillars of e-commerce success, generate cash flow, automate systems and build assets. So um, it's, we've been, I've been teaching online for 15 years. Collectively with my team of trainers, we cover 90, or about 90 years worth. Cause I have a whole team of trainers and coaches. We have a certification program. Um, it's very thorough and comprehensive. And our stats are extremely high, 80% graduation rate. We even have a whole process if they're not showing up. Here's what we do if they don't show up and you know, like we're on them. We yeah, that's very important. Literally... And that's, uh, I've got another friend, Mike Weiss, who has a, a, a large yes. platform where he does, you know, Mike. So, so yes. he has an incredible platform where he does a lot of training and uh, a lot of educational stuff that he does. Um, I've done another Hope Reveal with him in the past. Um, but that's one of his things as well is that he's focused on not just having people come through the class. But to, to graduate, graduate, make it happen, because there's a high percentage of people that join something and never finish. So you join the school with Anne with e-commerce school and you don't finish. You never make any money. You never are able to do some of the things you're doing. I, I, I guarantee you that Anne and her family are happier today than they were when they had to give up the windshield business. It's a yeah. different, a different place. It's I bet so you your sons, one son in, in China, I mean, you've got opportunity and, and opportunities available to you that you would not have had in your own lives had Anne not said, all right, you're, you're coming home. <laughs> yeah, this is, that was the linchpin. You're so right. That's a great, great thing, Anne. I'm so, oh. so grateful that you did that because... If it weren't for him coming home, if it wasn't for you thinking that you wanted your husband home. Well, the payoff he made. You wouldn't have me. this at all today. You wouldn't even have this business. No, I wouldn't have this business and I wouldn't have him making dinner every night. So, gosh, I'm kind of being facetious, but he loves to cook. So I'm like, man, I got to get him home. Be the cook. <laughs> be the cook. But seriously, my passion is I have a firm belief that entrepreneurs have the ability to impact more on our culture than anybody else. It is through entrepreneurs and that's because they're willing to take risks. Therefore, they see the world differently. They have a different lens and it's a lens worth developing as opposed to, I mean, the world has shifted very dramatically because of COVID and this idea of a job. You know, now we have to go up a game and start to become more resourceful. And so I did my resourcing within my family, my sourcing, my resourcing, my youngest son is my full-time videographer. You know, he came up through the ranks. That's and he awesome. was the first one I hired when, in, when he was in seventh grade. So it, it, here's the thing. COVID has actually opened up untold opportunity. There's always a silver lining. And business entrepreneurs always know that when something's going wrong somewhere, there's always hidden opportunity. 
You may not have that lens yet, but now is a great time to put on that lens. Amazon, I thought it was gonna get saturated. I know I've been teaching arbitrage for seven years. We're exploding and there's so much more beyond. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, I mean, we can go on forever about that because even Jeff Bezos has, uh, you know, he's got a trillion dollar business, but he, he lives on a 10 year uh, plan, Jeff Bezos does. And uh, if it doesn't fit within those 10 years, he doesn't do it. Uh, so that's a whole nother story. But um, I'm so, so excited to share this information with folks. And one more time, if you could tell us the website that folks can reach you at. Okay, it's joinebs.com. E as in Edward, B as in boy, S as in Sam, joinebs.com. Well, folks, um, if you're looking for a job right now, <laughs> you can go get a job, All right, There's a difference. That's one thing I was gonna say before we get ready to finish off here. Um, it was a job to get where you were in. However, it wasn't the job you were after. It was the calling you were living into. And there's a big difference between having a job and living in your call. And you're called to do this. And, and like me, I'm an entrepreneur and I've got, I'm called, I'm, I'm magnetically driven to, I cannot stop. There's nothing else I can do but this, right? And it's the same thing with you. And that's why you said, nope, not gonna quit. Even when people say, you are crazy. And you're crazy. Max, you're crazy. Oh, yeah, you're say you're not doing anything. You're not making any money. You're not doing this. No, no, I, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care necessarily that I'm, I have to make, I'm going to be a $10 million guy, a $100 million guy. I'm not after that. I'm after I've got to go this place. And whatever those numbers turn out to be is whatever they turn out to be. Um, however, in your case, uh, it turned into a multi-million dollar business. And now you have the opportunity to help other people do the same thing which is amazing. So it's, again, yeah. folks, there's an opportunity for you right now uh, for those, those of you that are, are actually looking to, to fulfill your call, your entrepreneurial work. I mean, even by doing something like this, um, it actually, it can be a fuel to the calls that you may have in your life. Maybe you're not called to be an Amazon person for the rest of your life, but maybe you're called to, to make something like this happen in your entrepreneurial walk so that you can continue to keep this business and it fuel the fire for something else. Exactly. Meanwhile, you still have this business going while you're employing other people, while they're making money and doing great things. So it's, it's a win-win situation. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be contacting um, Anne and visiting her site uh, to get plugged into what this, this whole program is and, and opportunities, folks, within three months that you may have the opportunity to make a, a great income and really live your call. So, Anne, thank you so much for being with us here on Hope Revealed. It was not only a, a hope that revealed in your life and your family, but a hope revealed for others. It's not just like we're here saying, hey, join this E thing and do this thing and pay this money, click here. No, this is like, this is real, folks. It's really happening. And if you don't think that Amazon is doing good right now, come on, everybody understands that when you can't go shopping, can't go to the mall, can't go to the place, they're clicking. And Amazon's winning pretty good, at least in the United States and around the world. There's other places in China. They got a big, big company over there making lots of actually more money than Amazon. But uh, that's another story. There's money available all over the place, and you can have an opportunity to tap into it if you want to do that. If you want to fulfill your life and your goal and your dreams, there's no reason why you can't try, especially if you're just sitting around thinking, what's next? Go to the website and figure that out. <laughs> All right, and thanks so much for being us with us today here on Hope Revealed. I'm so grateful for you and your family, and thanks for sharing your story with us. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. If you'd like to be a guest on Hope Revealed, feel free to reach out to us here, or you can visit us at mattcrump.tv, where there's always a Hope Revealed.